Welcome into Duval Daily presented by GenJag.com. I'm Jordan DeLugo. Thank you so much for tuning in here on Wednesday, August 21st. Preseason training camp, pretty much a wrap. You know, the Jaguars do have their final preseason game on Friday night, and it is going to be a big preseason game because the Jaguars are going to be playing some starters for a pretty substantial amount of time, up to two quarters, according to Doug Peterson. So not quite done with the preseason yet, but uh, 53-man rosters are coming next Tuesday. At the latest, that's the deadline, right? So um, we're going to have roster cuts. You're going to cut this roster from 90 to 53. And that's a big deal. And so we're going to break down some predictions and just kind of take a look at this roster and where things could stand after those cuts. And everybody calls it the final 53 too often, but it really is the initial 53 because it's going to change quite a bit throughout the regular season with injuries and different things going on. But really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out genjag.com slash shop, pick up some new Duval gear. You can become a channel member here on YouTube. So let's dive right into it, shall we? We're going to do the offense today, and we will do the defense tomorrow. Offense today, defense, and special teams tomorrow. How about that? Uh, you've got three specialists, and that's not going to be any secret as to who those guys are going to be. But looking at quarterback, you've got C.J. Beathard dealing with a groin injury. I don't think that necessarily impacts the 53-man roster. I thought it was going to be Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones anyways. I still think that. The Jaguars did pick up E.J. Perry for this weekend's game. I think that that is purely a we need a third quarterback for this final preseason game so we don't have to, uh, you know, in case anything happens, put Trevor Lawrence back out there in case of emergency, right, uh, after he goes out of the game. So I think that E.J. Perry is in town for a very short stint. Um, and I think that the Jaguars will try to stash C.J. Beathard on the practice squad or depending on how this groin injury really, how significant it is, potentially, you know, IR. We'll see how that plays out for for uh, C.J. Beathard there. And then at running back, I do think the Jaguars initially had planned to keep four with Keelan Robinson, but he's been dealing with injury and he just hasn't been able to get on the field. So I think they're going to keep three, Travis Etienne, Tank Bigsby, and Dearness Johnson, keeping in mind that they can probably get one of the guys they like um, from their depth back onto the practice squad, whether that be like a Jalen Jackson or a Gary Brightwell, whoever it may be, I think that the Jaguars have a chance to stash on the practice squad in that regard. So I think they roll with the three that they really know very well. And last year they went in with also Jermichael Hasty on the roster. He's no longer around. So they did have four running backs last year. That's definitely a position to keep an eye on. I think wide receiver is as well. They kept seven wide receivers last year. This year I have them keeping just six, which is more of the standard number for the NFL. You know, teams around the league generally uh, more often than not keep six. So you've got Gabe Davis, Brian Thomas Jr., Christian Kirk, Devin DuVernay, Parker Washington, who has had a tremendous camp and preseason. And then the final wide receiver, I've got them going with Tim Jones. You know, you, you really hoped that a Joshua Cephas or a Elijah Cooks could really stand out this preseason and try to separate themselves. You've got other guys playing good football as well. Austin Trammell, uh, Seth Williams is always competitive. Uh, Denzel Mims has even done some good things for this team. But I think that uh, they're going to go with six, and I think it's going to be Tim Jones because he's reliable on special teams, a very, very good special teams player. And he also can do the dirty work at a high level on offense. Like if you need him to go out there and block, he can do that very well. So... I think the Jaguars feel comfortable with him. Tim Jones has been around forever. He's still only 26 years old, just turned 26 this year. So I think the Jaguars continue to roll with Tim Jones, and I think it's going to be six wide receivers. But, of course, if it is just six, there's going to be some names that that are hitting the uh, waiver wire that fans might not be happy about. But there's also a good chance that you can get Elijah Cooks or Joshua Cephas, whoever it may be, back on the practice squad Um, certainly at wide receiver. At tight end, I have them keeping three, the same three that they kept last year. Evan Ingram, Brenton Strange, Luke Farrell. The one guy that really makes this difficult to me is Josiah DeGuara. He's been excellent for the Jaguars throughout training camp and preseason. So I think if they decide to let him, you know, hit the wire, 
there's a good chance somebody else picks him up. He's been impressive, and I think he belongs on an NFL 53. Whether it's in Jacksonville or not, I'm not sure. This is a team that runs a lot of 12, two tight end sets. So potentially they could keep four. Uh, It just doesn't seem like it's leaning in that direction. I think that they have some depth guys that they would feel comfortable potentially pulling up. Uh, you know, Bowman has, has stood out this, this training camp, certainly. So I think that they feel comfortable with three. That's what they did last year. And then I'm breaking up offensive tackle and interior offensive line, just for a little more clarity. Most people kind of do just offensive line and one big grouping, but we're going to do offensive tackle and then interior offensive line, and then talk about guys that can kind of do both. Um, I Cam Robinson at tackle, Anton Harrison, Walker, little Javon Foster. I think that that four is cut and dry. I think it's very clear. I don't think the Jaguars should make a move. Um, and, you know, some have suggested and talked about, you know, maybe the Jaguars move on from a Cam Robinson or a Walker Little before the season. But I don't think you want Javon Foster as your third tackle yet. I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't think the Jaguars should feel comfortable with that. Uh, going into a season where you've got to make the playoffs, you've got to get going back in the right direction. I think you want to have good tackle depth, and the Jaguars certainly do right now. And then at the interior of the offensive line, you've got your starter, Mitch Morse, at center. Ezra Cleveland and Brandon Sheriff starting at guard. That's three. You've got Luke Fortner, who the Jaguars are not going to move on from. Um, You know, third-round pick a couple years ago. You've got Cooper Hodges, who the Jaguars really like. I don't think he's had as strong of a preseason as you would have hoped for coming off the knee, but it can be difficult and take some time to really get back to full strength after missing a full season with a knee injury, especially for an offensive lineman. And then uh, the final spot on the offensive line, we've got nine so far. I've got Blake Hance making it. I think the Jaguars feel comfortable with him being a swing player. I think they really like his versatility. Did not have the best game this past weekend, certainly, but overall a guy that I think the track record for, for the Jaguars, the way they view it, is going to be strong enough to hold off some of the other players. Um, and, and again, he's kind of that swing player that can play inside or outside. But Cole Van Lannon had a very good game against the Buccaneers at right tackle. Not sure what they're going to do here, but that's how I've got the Jaguars initial 53 looking on the offensive side of the ball. I think the surprises would be uh, potentially only having three running backs. But again, with Keelan Robinson's injury, I'm not sure how you, how you, keep him around. I don't know if he's going to go to IR. I don't know if you're going to try to revert him to the practice squad, but he simply just hasn't been able to get on the field with the toe injury. Um, Again, Elijah Cooks, Joshua Cephas, guys I have on the outside looking in that I have, I know a lot of fans are, are fans of, right? And I am too. They're guys that have talent that certainly can contribute and continue to develop and grow. But at this point, it's a numbers game, and, and unfortunately, I think they're on the outside looking in because Tim Jones, again, back of the roster, you have got to play special teams at a high level. You know, credit to Elijah Cooks, who the other day was able to down a punt, Logan Cook punt, so like that does show you something, but Tim Jones has done special teams at a very high level for a very long time. He's still young. It's not like he's an aging player, uh, and again, a, a guy that you know can do the dirty work on offense. Are those other two more talented receivers? In my opinion, yeah, certainly they are. But uh, making the back of a roster is more than just your ability to contribute on offense or defense. It's special teams in a big way. And then again, I would hate to lose Josiah DeGuara because I think he's a guy that can help this football team. But uh, again, numbers game, it's tough. It, It is really tough. And it'll be interesting to see like, the back back end of offensive line. Like you didn't hear me mention Tyler Shatley. That's a guy that's been in Jacksonville for the last over the last decade. Right. Um, And he just simply, I I don't think has the physical ability that he did a couple years ago. And I think the Jaguars have kind of developed some guys like Blake Hanson, Cole Van Lannon over the last couple years. Obviously they like Cooper Hodges. It's just going to be a tough numbers game here on the offensive side of the ball and I only have them keeping 24 players on offense, which means I have them keeping 26 on the defensive side of the ball. We will talk about that tomorrow.
We will also preview this Jaguars versus Falcons matchup. Obviously, in the preseason, it's more about what you're doing than what your opponent is doing. You want to focus on yourself. As Ryan Nielsen said yesterday, uh, keep the task at hand, focusing on how you can succeed in your own scheme. But we'll dive into that. Really appreciate y'all tuning in. If you enjoy the content here, please like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. You can also check out ginjag.com shop, pick up some new Duval gear, become a channel member here on YouTube. Y'all have a good one.